basically this event is to showcase what the volunteers do in Cramlington, how the many lovely groups get together from crafts from Bright Red to Friends of Valley Park, all in between, getting the community out there volunteering for their locality. Hi, and with me now we have Councillor Paul and Jill, who is from the Friends of Valley Park. We've got a committee of about 12 people and volunteers, upwards of 20, who come along and help to conserve and maintain what's a really lovely piece of woodland. The Valley Park itself was somewhat neglected when we, you know, four years ago. So the council put in some money. We only did the foundation work, but the building upon the foundation and decorating the place is all due to Friends of Valley Park. It's a wonderful example of uh, how local council and uh, local volunteers can come together, make the place you know, good for living and good for the people and good for the residents. So we meet every Thursday morning in Valley Park. We meet by the notice board at 10 o'clock and we go off to do all manner of jobs. Um, so that's one way. Another way, we've got our website, so you can get in touch through friendsofvalleypark.co.uk. We've got Instagram pages and Facebook pages, so lots of ways to get in touch. Even when, when a person is slightly less abled, there will be something for them to do, keep count of things and uh, all those things, so they don't have to um, you know, put themselves off, oh, this is going to be a heavy work and I may not be suitable, so they can just come in and then do things. So I've came across this absolutely stunning stall at today's event. It's the Cramlington Craft Group and honestly, the things they've made are beautiful. We've got some Christmas things because that won't be long. I know, don't shoot me. But they have some absolutely fantastic work here. And we all have different abilities and we all enjoy doing different crafts. Well, you're certainly a very talented group. There's some absolutely beautiful uh, pieces here. Linda, how many people do you have in the group that's creating this? Currently we have about 40 members and the group's been going about 30 years and we've recently celebrated our 30th anniversary and the group as a whole created a wall hanging of different crafts, which is currently in the community centre, hanging on the wall, which we're very proud of. The members are all different ages, um, from about 50, and our oldest members are 90. So yes, all different ages, and we all interact very well, because the older members can teach the newer members, and vice versa, you know, learn skills from each other. And there's people who maybe be on their own at home, so it's a good way of seeing other people and have a little chat and catch up. Yes. And with me now, we have the very lovely Lisa Luke from Bright Red Charity. Lisa, lovely to see you. Can you tell us a little bit about what Bright Red actually does? Well, Bright Red is a regional charity and we fund things like research, patient care and education for patients that are suffering with uh, a blood cancer such as leukaemia, lymphoma or myeloma. We've planted over a thousand trees in uh, Northumberlandia and that was the purpose of that. We are developing a memorial site. So each tree that we've planted is in memory of someone. So as well as having something that helps people to grieve and to remem remember their loved one, we are also putting back into the environment because we're very conscious of, um, of our surroundings and trying to help the environment. Uh, we also have um, a plot at Lanacost, which is in Cramlington as well, so there's a little uh, nature reserve there, and people can go for walks from there. It's not far from Cramlington Hospital as well, so any patients that are, are there can actually come up and have a little bit of respite, a little bit of walk around there as well. Anyone passing today or finding out about, red, about Bright Red, Lisa, how would they get involved? So we're based at the Cramlington Village, in the, um, next to the Plough Pub, and there we have various different events, self-care events, we have a grief and loss event, we have every Wednesday we do a cafe, so every, people can drop in, but anyone in, can come along, anyone can volunteer. As I say, we do cover the whole of the north of England, but we are very involved with the community here in Cramlington as well, so, and we love it here. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking to us, Lisa, and good luck with everything you've got going on. Thank you. Thank you. 
And next up, let's talk to Helen Morris, the Mayor of Cramlington. So people passing, doing their shopping today, could they get involved? How do they get involved? Just basically stop at each other's stalls, have a chat. There must be something here that interests them because there's everything from photography to charities to volunteering for crafts or getting out in the um, open, like in, in Alexander Park or Dodden Woods or stuff like that. There's something for everybody. So with me now is Cramlington uh, Camera Club and some of the gentlemen who run that. Yeah, well, we're, we're Cramlington uh, Camera Club. We've been set up for 40 odd years and uh, we have a number of things which we, we, we present to members during the course of the season, which is from September to April. And we have uh, people who come and talk about various aspects of photography so we can all learn from that. Uh, we have competitions, which is good because we have qualified external judges to come in and to give feedback and that again helps us to, to improve. And it's all skill levels. We have people that are very, very novice, very beginners, all the way up to some very experienced camera uh, users. And, and the information is just shared between each other so that people learn and, and develop their skills in photography. It's a, a small group. I think we've currently got about 22 to 24. 22 to 24. Yeah. Now, how do people get involved if they have a burning ambition to be the next David Bailey? Well, we've got a website. People get in touch with the website, have a look at the website, see the sort of things that we do, and then it's very easy from there to become a member. What about if there was any aspiring models? Do you use models in your...? We do. This, uh, this young lady here uh, was a model. This gentleman here, that was all done in a studio by one of our members. Um, and the club owns some lights, so we can set all that up. And with me now is Town and County Councillor Mark Swinburne. So Friends of Doddington Woods was the first group that we sort of set off in the area, it's in my ward. So this area was a bit of a troubled area. Um, we had a lot of problems with fly tipping, with groups gathering, um, making a mess, a few drug issues and things like that. And we wanted to tidy it up and the, the residents had complained for some time and it had gone back many, many years. Um, and even, um, I know one of the local police officers remember it as, as, as a child. So I said, well, if you get together, I'll give you some funding and we'll see what you can do. And it's not about what I could do. I didn't direct them. I left it in their hands. And they started off putting things together, set up their own group. Friends of Dunton Wood is a group that started sort of on the tail end of COVID and the council put out a, a shout out looking for a, to start a friends of group for this tiny little bit of woodland. It's about just under an acre and a half of land and they, they wanted to turn it from basically what had become a dumping ground into something that the community could use. So um, it started off as a group of five women who just took control and cleaned it up and we did a, a myriad of different litter picks in the first year just because the rubbish that was there was really like it had built up over the over the years that's brilliant it sounds really really good and i do like that the women taking control getting something done that's what we're like girl power and over the past 18 months we've now grown from four to 15 groups and the thing about it is it's not councillors saying this is what we're going to do in your area and dictating to them it's what the groups want to do within the town or within their areas themselves all we do is provide help support and guidance for the community to help develop, grow and, and do what they want to do in their town. It's what they want to do, it's their town. We're just there to help and guide them. We have a Facebook group which is where we tend to advertise most of our sort of get-togethers and things like that or um, we have a website as well just donnettwoods.co.uk. That's amazing, thank you so much for talking to me Gemma, thanks. And with me now, we have this rather beautiful red squirrel whose name is Helen. Hello, Helen. Hello. Can you tell us, please, I love the outfit, by the way, fantastic. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your group, the Cramlington and District Red Squirrel Group? Our area travels from Blythe uh, down to Seton Valley, and uh, that's what we do. It says it on the tin. We try to conserve our red squirrels in this area because we do have red squirrels in Cramlington. We monitor, we've got monitoring boxes and we monitor the area to make sure that there are only red squirrels there. Unfortunately, there are often grey squirrels, especially on our boundaries, and then we have to deal with those grey squirrels. If anyone wants to get involved, if they're passing today, how would they get involved and help you in your work to, to conserve the red squirrels? 
Well, um, we are actually custodians of uh, East Cramlington Nature Reserve as well, and we have activities days there on a um, Sunday often. So if they look on our Facebook site, um, they can get extra information. Come along to an activity day or get in touch with us on our Facebook site. And with me now we have Fran, who is part of the Girl Guiding Cramlington Division. So we work with girls from the age of four right up till, well, adults, there's no real age limit. And we do all sorts of stuff. So anything from the little ones tasting fruit to some of the older ones going camping, absolutely anything. There's nothing that we don't cover. You know, it's experiences that the girls don't get anywhere else and we can give them that experience, which is great got um, rainbows which is your four to seven year olds then you've got your brownies which is seven to ten then your guides which is your 10 to 14 and then we've got rangers 14 to 18 and then after that you can then become a leader and help give back or you can join the, join the trefoil guild which is uh, the retired leaders as we like to call them do the guys do they get involved in any environmental issues or are they involved with conservation is that is that in your remit of any of the projects that you do it can be yes yes we do lots of things with that as well and um, we've been involved with little bits of Northumberland and um, but getting out into into the nature and experiencing that is definitely part of what we give the girls the opportunity to do so whether it's camping in nature um, you know we've had girls foraging before and um, we've got badges like natural remedies so getting to know about what's out there that can help us but there's lots of bits and pieces that we fit in that fits around that topic yes if anyone wants to get involved how would they do it if they go onto our website um, and then click on the sign up there and it'll give you all the information on there and um, what's available and how to go about signing up. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you, Fran. So what do you think is important as a community that the residents can do um, in the way of conservation or to protect the environment? Basically, get out of your house and come and give us a hand, clearing things up, making things better in the woods, making things better on the paths, and it's just bringing Cramlington together. That's lovely. Helen, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you.